Good morning, it's Tuesday, and it's time for our daily devotion. Uh, this week we are looking at uh, we are looking at preparing for Advent, uh, Advent in a pandemic. And so we're looking at how we can lament, how we can uh, own uh, what Advent isn't going to be, what Christmas isn't going to be for us. Uh, and maybe uh, propel it forward to a deeper understanding of who God is in our lives. Um, so uh, it, this is the second installment. So if you didn't if you didn't connect yesterday, you might want to look on your emails or on YouTube or Facebook to to see yesterday. Also, for those of you uh, listening as part of Orville Mennonite, uh, uh, the text that I'm reading of my own will be in a letter that we'll send out on Friday, uh, at least in some form. There might be a little a little bit of editing yet. Uh, I have I have a scripture to read. I have uh, a couple of statements to offer. Uh, there's a link in the email that this uh, video comes out in that gives a fuller uh, uh, a fuller expression of what lament is. Uh, and then we have a song. Uh, so this, the song I'm going to sing, I've, I think I've sung maybe twice before already. It's from Sing the Story, and it's a perfect lament song. Uh, perfect is subjective, of course, right? Perfect. It's a very good example of lament. And for me, I think the melody is beautiful. <laughs> uh, so for me, it's a perfect lament song. Um, uh, so that's what we're going to do this morning. The, I think the the devotions these, this this week, instead of being five-ish minutes, might be eight, nine-ish minutes. Sorry about that. Uh, so uh, here's here's Matthew 26, 36 through 42. So we're, we're jumping ahead a little bit in Matthew to get this, but it's because it's an example of Jesus giving a lament. Uh, Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. He said to his he said to the disciples, "Stay here while I go and pray over there." When he when he took Peter and Zebedee's two sons, those would be John and James, uh, he began to feel sad and anxious. Then he said to them, "I'm very sad. It's as if I'm dying. Stay here and keep alert with me." Then he went a short distance farther and fell on his face and prayed, "My Father, if it's possible, take this cup of suffering away from me." However, not what I want, but what you want. He came back to the disciples and found them sleeping. He said to Peter, couldn't you stay alert one hour with me? Oh, stay alert and pray so that you won't give in to temptation. The spirit is eager, but the flesh is weak. A second time he went away and prayed, my father, if it's not possible that this cup be taken away unless I drink it, then let it be what you want. In other words, my father, I trust you, right? Uh, yesterday I mentioned that uh, uh, Jesus coming into the world in a, in a world where uh, his people were occupied by, by a hostile foreign government, right? And he was born into that world, and even though he was the, he was the prophesied answer to, of hope, right? When he was born into the world, nothing changed. Right? Nothing changed. Well, not immediately. I'm reading off to the side. That's why I'm looking away. Uh, when Jesus was born, the government tried to kill him. His parents took him into exile for a number of years before returning to Nazareth. And still, really, from an outside perspective, right? Uh, nothing changed. Uh, even when Jesus began public ministry 30 years into his life on earth, nothing changed. The people were still occupied. Even after the crucifixion and resurrection, even as the newly birthed church flourished, nothing changed. The people were still persecuted. The people were still occupied. Well, nothing changed in terms of the position of the people of God in the world, but certainly lives were changed. The world was changed moving into the future, right? Lives were saved, ministry happened, God was worshipped, and the overall plan of the creator of the universe continued along and still does. The hope given to us in Jesus is neither propelled by nor limited by the world around us. The hope of salvation through Christ and being a part of the community of followers of Christ 
transcends any position or situation we have in the world. What if, what if this year we took some time to try to understand that a little more? That's my hope as we, as we move forward in Advent. And I think, wow, this is an interesting look on the video, isn't it? Look at my giant hands. <laughs> I think that uh, learning to lament might help us uh, might help us get there, uh, and so and so I've included a link uh, with a broader expression expression of lament. But what we heard Jesus say in this text was basically lament. God, this is hard. I am really sad, and you know we saw you know, anxious and and sad and falling on his face in tears, right? Lament like grieving lament. Uh, and godly lament, right, comes back to admitting all of this, not passing it over, not saying I shouldn't be sad, none of that, no, no, uh, no blustering, boisterous, oh, don't be afraid, or don't be sad, or don't be, no, none of that. Admitting, admitting, oh, this is horrible, and I am, I can't even move because I'm so sad. And God, I trust you. That's lament. It's really hard to get to the real trust part. It's really hard to get to the healing part. It's really hard even to get to the movement part of trying to move forward unless we own what is bad. I don't mean, uh, well, I mean, it can certainly include what's my fault, right? Uh, but just owning up to, you know what, this is terrible and I am affected even though I don't want to be. Like, I can say that for the pandemic. I feel like as a, as a person of faith, as a pastor, as a man, even without those other things, right? I shouldn't be affected by this, right? It's just another thing. I, I can adapt. And, but you know what? I, I sleep more. My anxiety's higher. Like, and I, I, like I have periods of sadness uh, that have nothing to do except with we have these restrictions and we have these things out there. Uh, that are beyond our control. And so it, it my only path for, forward, and I'm not unique in this, right, is to own that. Like, okay, yeah, I'm not the, I'm not the strong person I thought I were, well, I want to be. I'm not the strong person I want to be, right? Uh, and, and so I own that, and then I can say, but God, I trust you. That's Lament. So the task now is how do we, how might we use that as we, as we think about the Christmas season, Thanksgiving and Christmas, the whole holiday package, right? From now, really, until mid-January even. How do we, how do we, how could we use lament given to us by God? Faith mercy, grace, love. And a sense of, we heard uh, Scott Holland on Sunday talk about mystery and awe, right, and wonder. Uh, use those to say, okay, so this Christmas season is going to be different. Let's be sad about that. That's fine. But also, let's see what we can learn and maybe we can even move forward somehow. A new tradition, maybe a couple of new traditions, or just a, something different that we do this year because it's what we can do, right? So lament. Uh, in the question in the email, uh, part of this, the, it asks you to, you know, how can we apply how Jesus laments here with uh, how we might be lamenting about about Christmas. So here's the song. This the song is about is about injustice. It's lamenting injustice, and it and it even kind of laments that Jesus had to go to the cross, right? So much wrong and so much injustice. So you shouldered a wooden cross. Now, like you, my best dreams are shattered. All I know is the weight of loss. 
My beloved, my beloved, tell me where can you be found? You drank deep of the cup of suffering, and your death is our holy ground. Olive trees showed the pain of sorrow, they were grieving for their Lord. Round Jerusalem the hills were mourning, as the city denied its God. No fine song, no impressive music can attempt to relieve my heart. In this hour I am called to grieving, lest no other will play this part. My beloved, my beloved, tell me where can you be found? You drank deep of the cup of suffering, and your death is our holy ground. Everything I could ever offer could not pay for what God has done. But my life shall be spent in honor of my Savior, God's only Son. My beloved, my beloved, tell me where can you be found? You drank deep of the cup of suffering, and your death is on holy ground. Oh my, 12 minutes. Sorry about that. Uh, I hope it was helpful, though. Have a blessed day.